Ja, ist das so? Wait, wait for the microphone. That is never on. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh, mashallah. What a <laughs> karamat you're opening up on the Ramazan first time. Ramazan Mubarak. Mashallah. Uh, uh? You said today after Juma, you said that, I, d I don't know if you meant like earlier in the Jamaat or Long when we were. We never see all those speakers. So. Anyway, you've been boring all these months. It's okay. Ramazan coming. Yes, what do you say? Uh, I don't know if you meant earlier when we were in the Jamaat or when we were younger that fasting, the physical part of fasting, being hungry is was more difficult and now it's not so difficult. Yeah. So now that we got that blessing that it's not really so difficult or hard for us to fast physically. For us here, for now, okay? If you live in the tropics, it's different. I'm speaking something that is first for the people that is around. You know? But even in other parts of the world, if you've been fasting 20, 30, 40 years of your life, then uh, you adjust a little bit. You know how to adjust, yes. So now that when you have that blessing, how can you, um, how can that energy that you were using before to say, I need to get through this hunger, now that that's not being used in that way so much, how should we use that energy? You store the energy for worship. You store that energy for worship. If anything, you store that energy so that you're not busy in this world, worldly thoughts, worldly ideas, worldly chasing, worldly ambitions. You're not, even during the daytime. You don't have too much energy to be running after that, no? So pull yourself back a little bit more. So conserve that energy now to just take it easy in these days to turn off that phone is already a big, uh, let's say, a miracle, huh? a big opening. Just to turn it off, just to say yourself one hour. The world is not going to crash if you don't check your phones for one hour. Or two hours or six hours. Just to disengage now. Just to run top of the mountain, so to speak. Be simple, you understand? Uh, so. When you are doing that, then you're pulling yourself back. You're trying to be simple, and in that simplicity, you're trying to remember your Allah more. You're trying to give thanks more. At least you're trying to breathe a little bit more. You're trying to, uh, like I said, Ramadan is turning the whole system upside down. When you're supposed to eat, you don't eat. When you're not supposed to eat, you eat. Right? It is us... Allah has given, especially to this nation, although it's given fasting to earlier nations, different ways. But to this nation, he's saying now, because of the mercy of their Prophet, والسلام, fast. Don't worry, it's going to be easy. And the rewards are going to be so great that even your Prophet doesn't know what the rewards are. Because now, the fasting, it is for me, Allah is saying. Fasting, it is for me. So now, we are fasting. Who are we fasting for? So many, they lose the uh, connection. They don't know who they're fasting. You're not. That's why in some mezhabs, you have to make the niyat every day. If you don't make niyat, your, your prayer, your, your fasting is not accepted. Can you imagine? Hanafi mazhab, you make niyat one time for the whole month. It's it. It's finished. But for example, the Shafi mazhab, you have to make niyat specifically when you eat the sahur. Because you have to awaken yourself a little bit more. Why am I fasting? Because of, for Allah's sake. What am I doing? I'm staying. So, to be aware, to be awake, fasting for Allah's sake. Not fasting because it is cultural. Not fasting because everyone is doing it and later you're all going to sit down to eat. Not fasting because you're told to do so. Not fasting because you're going to get the rewards. Fasting for Allah's sake. Now, fasting is showing what as humans? What is it showing to us when we fast? Our weakness, our servanthood, our weakness. That man is the only creature that can declare itself Lord. That once the ego is declaring itself Lord. But in that one month, we, like this or like that, stepping on the ego completely, as a whole ummah all over the world, stepping on that ego to say, that ego that says, I am living, I am alive, I am Lord. 
as Allah says, put him to the valley of hunger for three days. And the ego is saying, no, no, you are Lord and I'm a creature. So, what is the use of fasting if you're not going to remind yourself what a weak creature you are? How are you going to know and understand what a weak creature you are and to remember if you are busy when you're fasting with nonsense, still with this dunya? Yeah, you're not eating, you're not drinking, but like what Shaykh Fendi is saying, if you tie the dog also outside and you don't give it food and water, it may also claim that it's fasting, but it's not. So as humans, as believers, how do we fast? Now this is beyond, okay, you know, fasting with your ears, fasting with your eyes, fasting with your... We stay away from all forbidden actions, yes. We stay away from all actions that is going to pull ourselves away from treating this as an ibadat. This is an ibadat. This is not a cultural thing. This is, this is a worship. What kind of a worship that you do when you don't remember Allah? Yet, how many of us, we can even fast without remembering Allah? Because we're just so used to it. But how are you going to remember Allah to say, this is for you, Ya Rabbi, if we are the nation of Ibrahim, salam, right? What did he do? He pulled the knife. He pulled the knife. He pulled the knife 70 times. Now this is Ramazan. We're supposed to pull the knife to our ego. Now every time that we are suffering, every time it's kicking in, do we say, ha, huh, good, my ego, now I have you under my control. I'm pulling the knife on you. This is for Allah's sake I'm doing this. You don't make the connection, there's no meaning. You can be doing the greatest thing in the world, but because there's no connection, there is no meaning. If there's no meaning, your action is meaningless, it's empty. You're not going to get any benefit from it. So, fasting is for Allah. It's not for our ego. So watch ourselves during iftar. Watch ourselves that we're not just busy whole day long thinking of what to eat, what to cook. Watch ourselves that we cannot wait to break our fast. What does that mean to break our fast? One fast, fasting physically, you break your fast. It is through eating and drinking, meaning you've deprived yourself. You deprive what? Your body. You deprive your ego. Aren't we in separation from our Lord? Aren't we in deprivation of our Lord and our Prophet and Ahirat? So now breaking of the fast is the iftar time, as the hadith is saying, no? Iftar and what? Judgment day. Because now we are, our souls will be free now to get the energy, to get the nourishment, not from the food and drink, but from our Lord. If we are only thinking of that a little bit when we are breaking our fast, not just breaking our fast, just to, even if you think that you are a little bit fake, doesn't matter. Faking, doing good things is good. To say, I cannot wait until we can pray taraway prayers. I cannot wait until tonight when everybody's sleeping, I can just be with my Lord. I cannot wait. Tell yourself that. Tell yourself, Ya Rabbi, I cannot wait to be with you. Tell yourself, I cannot wait to be with you, Ya Rasulullah. I cannot wait to be with you, O oh, my Shaykh. See what's going to happen. See now the quality of your nights, the quality of your days, the quality of your fasting is going to change. Because everything now you are challenging, there is a meaning. You are channeling, there is a meaning now. You're doing it for them. You're saying, you know when we are children, everything we do, we say, this is for you, mom, this is for you, dad, baba, this is for you, Anna, this is for you. Do you like it? Do you like it? Remember how we are? When we enter the tariqat, everything we do, we want to have our sheikh to like it, for him to approve, for him to smile. So what happened? What happened? Why we don't have that quality every now and again? To do and to say, Ya Rabbi, 
I'm presenting this to you. It's not worth it, but I'm presenting to you, this to you. I'm putting some effort into it. Then see. You will watch by yourself how beautiful that fast is going to be because you're preparing it. You're not going through the motion. And at that time, who cares whatever happens in this world? Right? Because that time, you're preparing everything for your Lord. That time, you're answering to your Lord. When he asks, Allah stubi rabbikum, you say, qalu bala. Yes, you are, ya Rabbi. I'm doing this. This is for you, ya Rabbi. So this is part of tafakkur. Before you break your fast, sit and say, what is the quality of my fast today? Don't just jump into the food. Huh? Especially these Pakistanis, they break fast. Complete sunnah, astaghfirullah. What they eat? Samosa, pakora. What else? Idli. What else? Um, huh? Food shop. Fruit chart. I say, oh, sunnah. No, to break your fast. Eh? Before you do that, to sit, sit sometimes. Don't rush. This month, as I said, time is turned upside down. Don't rush. Sit a little bit and think, how was my fast today? How was my fast? Yes, I stayed away from food and drink. How was that my fast? What did I do? How busy I was with trying to run today to please my Lord. What did I do today? in my forgetfulness and running after my ego. Think. Then make the intention that that date, that water that you're going to eat and to drink, make the intention, Ya Rabbi, may this give me more iman. Increase my faith, increase my health, increase everything to run after you. That time, your relationship to food is going to be different. You're not going to jump to it too. You're going to taste a little bit. So we're still going through the actions. You're still fasting. You're still breaking your fast. But the intention is different now. When the intention is different, the meaning is different. Try to do that. It'll be okay. It'll be good, inshallah. So,